We've got a Cleveland Browns report mailbag coming up on today's show. Now, today's questions were live or asked during our live show, which was on Wednesday this week, but usually it's Thursday at 4 o'clock Eastern. So let's start things off with a super chat we had fly in during the live show from the one and only Brown Tiger. Likelihood Anthony Schwartz is back next year. Put me down for actually 30%, and that might be a bit high. I'm guessing he'll make the 90-man roster to start camp. I don't think he'll make the 53-man roster. Now, there's probably going to be a ton of trade Anthony Schwartz talk. To who? The CFL? Like, who's trading for Anthony Schwartz? They'll just wait for him to get cut before they give up a 2029 seventh-round pick. So, maybe Anthony Schwartz can turn it around going into year three. I'm not very optimistic. Ryan Chowdhury is next up on the show. How fast is a fast wide receiver by your definition, by like 40-yard time? I think my cutoff is if you run under a 4-4-2, four, four, you're pretty fast. Michael Misner here. What's the latest on Clowney and Kareem Hunt? The latest on Clowney is I hope the Browns don't re-sign him. They really shouldn't re-sign him. It was childish and immature the way he left the team and just sort of bashed Miles Garrett and the defense on the way out, so to speak. But I think what pissed me off more is the way he deflected all that and then just blame Mary Kay and Cleveland.com. No, you said those things. Just because you're upset that they got a microphone, which you sort of asked for by doing an interview, doesn't mean you can go around and say those words were taken out of context. They weren't at all. As for Kareem Hunt, I've heard that maybe he'll come back on a vet minimum. I hope not. I mean, I was the biggest Kareem Hunt stand out there last year. But this season was no... No, no good. No fuego. So for that reason, I'd rather see his reps go to Jerome Ford. Jason Derulo. What do you think about trading for Adam Thielen? Interesting. We've talked a lot about trading for wide receivers. We haven't talked about trading for Adam Thielen. Um, in 2022, I think we can get his stats up on screen. Yep. Thank you, Sam. 70 grabs, 716 yards, six touchdowns. He had a bad ankle injury and... The 30-plus-year-old slot receiver definitely filled in, fills a need of like what the Browns are looking for in a type of receiver. But I think Adam Thielen's best days are well behind him, and he's kind of going out downhill somewhat quickly. Uh, if he's cut, I could see maybe the possibility of signing him. I don't think you give up any draft picks for him, though. And I think the Vikings might end up cutting him. They are not in a good cap situation right now, and Thielen is a... Is a pretty easy guy to move on from at this point in his career. Now, I do want to ask this kind of off-the-wall question right now. Name a random Browns receiver. I love doing these because it's always a good, like, um, what's it called? Uh, time capsule and whatnot. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. It's a good time capsule here. But it has to be random. You cannot say, you know, a, 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 an Omari Cooper. It's got to be very random. The more random, the better. So give me a random Browns receiver down below. Levi Mayfield asking, what's your thoughts on Indomitian Sue? Sign a one year, one year with him to beef up that line. It's not going to happen. If it was going to happen, it would have already happened at this point. Now, for all of you that said, don't sign Indomitian Sue, he sucks, he's washed, whatever, look at the Eagles in the playoffs right now. He looked pretty good to me against the 49ers. But if the Browns had any interest, it would have been last year. I doubt they go after him this offseason. Scorpion, what's going on? Besides Duran Payne, who else do you really, really want the Browns to sign? Good question. I do appreciate you prefacing with beside Duran Payne. So I think we got to start on defense because on offense, there's really only one need, and that's wide receiver. And the best receiver in the market is Juju Smith-Schuster, and I think he sucks. So on defense, it's got to start up front, right? And if it's not Duran Payne, Javon Hargrave is an interesting name. I like Shai Tuttle a lot out of uh, New Orleans. Um, Tier Tart, I believe, is a restricted free agent. I'm a big fan of his work as well. Uh, secondary, Jesse Bates, uh, safety, Julian Love. To give one name, though, I almost want to cheat and say when DeForest Buckner is released by the Colts, then DeForest Buckner, but I won't cheat. Put me down for, I guess, got to be Javon Hargrave, right? It's got to be another big defensive tackle. TLH Arts and Projects, early predictions. Where is Jacoby Brissett going? And how much do we get for him in a trade? We've got bad news for you. You can't trade Jacoby Brissett because he's a free agent. So all the players like Kareem Hunt and Jadeveon Clowney and Jacoby Brissett, they are not tradable. They are free agents. Where is he going to end up? 
I don't know, somewhere with a, a bridge quarterback system in place. I wonder if, like, the Raiders could make sense if, you know, Tom Brady retiring and maybe Rodgers doesn't go to Vegas. I don't know what they want to do, so maybe he goes there. That's a, a shot in the dark. Now, before we get any further into today's show, I'm going to call on everyone watching right now that has not subscribed. Please go ahead and do so. Help us reach our next milestone, 17,500 subs. We are 444 away, so help us reach that goal sooner rather than later by clicking onto the subscribe button. AFX Apocalypse, all jokes aside, who would be the best uh, backup QB for the Browns? AFX Apocalypse is trying to troll me with the Stetson Bennett slander. Well, I'm slandering. I don't like Stetson Bennett. But best backup quarterback option, I think it's probably going to end up being Kellen Mond. One, he's not a free agent. He's under contract. Two, when the Browns released Josh Dobbs, that told me that when they picked up Kellen Mond the day after he was released in Minnesota, from that day forward to the day Deshaun Watson would be activated to the roster and they have to take someone's roster spot, there was a QB2 battle for 2023 brewing between Kellen Mond and Josh Dobbs. And clearly, Mond impressed enough to, I think, what was win the backup role for next year, knowing Brissett wouldn't be back. So my best guess, guess is Kellen Mond. Little Beam. So the Browns maybe do a one-year, $15 million contract with Brandon Cooks if he comes here. So you, you, Brandon Cooks is under contract, right, with the Texans. You'd have to trade for him. He's not a free agent, and you would be picking up his contract, which I believe has 2023 and 2024 on it, maybe 2025. That part I cannot remember, but at least two more years on this deal. And his base salary is around $18 million, so... It, it, you'd restructure if this is what you're talking about, but that's not going to happen or extend him potentially. But no, you, you can't pick up or sign Brandon Cooks to this deal. Brendan Gray, Ohio. If we pick up Jesse Bates and we can get some defensive line, we are Super Bowl contenders. Do you agree? You add Jesse Bates. It's probably going to be your only big free agent swing. I think the Browns are going to have around 35-ish million to spend in free agency this year. They're going to want to save $5 million for their draft picks and like an emergency in case of a midseason addition. So now we got $30 million to spend. Jesse Bates probably going to cost about $20 million a season. So that leaves you 10 to fill out the rest of your roster. So you get Jesse Bates and you nail that second round draft pick. And by nail, I mean they are a starter like Martin Emerson and a big time contributor. And then there's this guy named Deshaun Watson, that quarterback. Yeah. I definitely think this Browns team is Super Bowl contenders. Arguably, and this is a, you know, tinfoil hat, you know, big, big bias here. Why aren't they Super Bowl contenders even without Jesse Bates? That's the whole point of trading for Deshaun Watson was to immediately jump up towards the front of the line and be with the big heavyweights of the AFC. But clearly a long way to go until we see that time and time again. Terry Black, Terry Black's barbecue, very good. With the Broncos giving up a pick for Sean Payton, could Jerry Judy or Cortland Sutton be on the move? Good question. So, if you remember, uh, in case you're unfamiliar, the trade details for Sean Payton were a first and a future second to New Orleans for Sean Payton and a third. And now the Broncos are in a weird spot where they've given up a ton of draft picks, right? They've given up three firsts for a combination of Russell Wilson and Sean Payton. So maybe they look at their assets and go, can we liquidize some of these and try and get some draft capital back? And Jerry Judy and Cortland Sutton would be two trade candidates for Denver most likely. Now, Judy really surged at the end of the season, and we'll talk more about him in just a moment. Cortland Sutton was supposed to be the wide receiver one on this team, and if you have Cortland Sutton in fantasy, you probably know what I'm going to say next, which is he has some great games, but then he has some bad stretches. And those bad stretches are starting to concern me. Now, Jerry Judy, I think, would be the player to watch for here because he's garnished more trade buzz. I don't think he ends up getting traded, to be honest with you guys. The reason being is it sounds like they nearly had a trade in place for him before the trade deadline with the Packers that would involve a second-round pick coming to Denver, and that wasn't enough. And since then, Jerry Judy, 972, 972 yards and six touchdowns, Majority of that came 
after the trade deadline, where his value only rose. So for that reason, I don't think Cleveland probably has enough to get it done. Today's show, by the way, made possible by none other than our sportsbook partner, BetUS. Check them out today by going to chatsports.com slash bet and using promo code BROWNS125. When you do, they're going to offer you guys a 125% deposit bonus. There's really no other sportsbook out there that's giving you that kind of money. So make sure all of your Super Bowl picks and all that good stuff are made at chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code BROWNS125. Joshua Miller, DeForest Buckner would be our best bet. Trade Greg Newsom and a fifth for Buckner. Why did the Colts do this? I guess maybe because they get a younger player in Greg Newsom and hope that him and um, Kenny Young can be a good combination. But I don't think Indy is interested in trading for players. They want draft picks right now. That's that's how you do a rebuild, right? Kenny Moore. I say Kenny Young. Um, so I, I think the Colts probably declined this trade here. Maybe they view Greg Newsom as, you know, a surefire thing rather than a lottery ticket like a draft pick. But hey, if that could be if that could get done, I'm in. I'm in, Josh. Jersey Dog next up on the show. Who's going to show the most improvement next year with Schwartz as defensive coordinator? Maybe my favorite question of the entire mailbag. Who's kind of getting, you know, most Miles Garrett's gonna be in for one hell of a season, probably. With the way that Jim Schwartz isolates his best pass rushers. That's probably going to be one guy. Can I can I say something that's not on the roster? Can I say someone not on the roster? Right? Could it be someone who's coming in from free agency or coming in through the draft? Because Jim Schwartz does a great job with his interior defensive tackles. And I don't think maybe Perry on Winfrey, that could probably be the guy. Pencil me down for Perry on Winfrey as someone who really makes a huge jump because right now the, the floor for Winfrey is, is pretty low. Whereas for, uh, for for Garrett's pretty high. So to answer your question, Jersey Dog, I'll go Perry on Winfrey. TLH Arts and Projects. What about trying to get my favorite QB right now, Josh Dobbs, back on this team? Like I mentioned earlier, it sounds like the Browns made their decision on their 2023 backup QB. They went Kellen Mond. That's why they released Dobbs. Now, maybe after watching Dobbs play in meaningful regular season games for the Titans down the stretch... Andrew Barry goes, we made a mistake and bring back Dobbs, but that's going to be another free agent contract they have to give out. Whereas Kellen Mond is on his rookie deal with the Browns and pretty cheap. I just don't think the backup QB is going to get a lot of, you know, monetary investment this offseason. AFX Apocalypse asking, should the Browns sign Jarvis Landry again or Larry Ogunjobi or even Jabril Peppers? Heck, even Joe Schobert. If I had to rank those four guys in terms of who I'd like to see the Browns sign this offseason, I'll go Larry Ogunjobi, one. Jabril Peppers, not far behind at two. Jarvis Landry at three, which sucks to say because Juice was such an important part of this locker room. And his his presence was missed in the slot this year, but he wasn't good with the Saints really this past season. And then Joe Sherber at the bottom. Like, he was not that good this past season. He, he had one good year with the Browns, and... That made him some money in Jacksonville. Good for him, but that's really about it. So th- th- that would be my four priority rankings of those four guys, really just based off need. And I think defensive tackle has to be number one. Last question coming in from Mike Hall. What do you think the chances are the Browns win the AFC North next year? I don't know. Bengals are going to be tough to dethrone. Like the Bengals showed this year that last year was not just a Cinderella run. Like, we all know Joe. We all knew Joe Burrow was gonna be good, but actually, the Bengals team put it together. That was that was that was frightening. I'm not gonna lie. So, I think the Bengals now. You know, if Lamar gets traded, that's gonna change things. If Pickett picks up where he left off, and he ended the year on a pretty good note, I'll put the chances of the Browns winning the division to give you a percentage, which I hate doing because it's just making a number up. But you know, thirty percent, right? I think the Bengals probably have 50%. And now nah, maybe 30 is even too high. I don't know. It's somewhere in that neighborhood. Not. It's going to be tough to dethrone Cincinnati. Back-to-back division champs. Let's put it that way for sure here. Now, before we go, I am going to crowdsource everyone watching right now for a TV show recommendation. 
My girlfriend and I have recently finished up our show, and we're on the market for a new show. So if you've got any good recs, let me know in the comments section below. Also, if you haven't already, follow me on Twitter at Matthew Petey. That way you can stay informed on all the Browns offseason news and moves and stuff like that. So hit me up at Matthew Petey. I put the link to my Twitter in the comments and the description of today's show. That's going to do it for us on this mailbag. I appreciate everyone who took time out of their day and made us a part of your day.